Hi, my name is Davor and I'm one of the creators of Pasta, a multi-purpose tool based on a simple kitchen scale. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can whip up one for yourself, making you a real pasta chef. So let's get started. Okay, so at the heart of every pasta lies a regular old digital kitchen scale. We're going to open it up. First, make sure there's no battery in. These usually require a bit of unscrewing around. This one has two screws. And the rest, in this case, just a bit of brute force. Okay, save this for later, just so you can plug it back up once we're done and make it a bit more resistant, spill it and stuff like that. Okay, now as far as the kitchen scales electronics goes, this is the brains taking up in input from these four load cells connected together. We're not going to be using any of uh, the kitchen scale's own electronics. So we're going to cut all of these and hook them up together in a circle. Okay, so when connecting, it's important that these two are connected with the same color as these two, and that these two are connected with the same color as these two. So this can be black, this can be black, and these white. So let's get started. Okay, so using these pliers is obviously not a good idea because, as you can see, the wires are too thin and whenever I try to strip the insulation, it just breaks them off. So, let's cut this again. And use a knife. Okay, I just put the sponge there.
I like to just give it a slight little tug just to make sure they won't undo themselves. Okay, so now all that we're left with are these four wires coming out of each load cell. What we're going to do now is connect them at last to our HX711 board. We're going to be using E plus, E minus, A minus and A plus. So we're going to have the pluses here, the minuses here, and E and A on the opposite sides of each other diagonally. So this is going to be E plus, this is going to be A plus. Opposite to E plus diagonally is going to be E minus. And opposite to A plus is going to be A minus. So let's connect it and start soldering. So top left is E plus. Opposite to it is E minus. top is A plus, but now I've got going A minus, which is this one. Okay, I'm going to solder down these three, because I've got to move the board and I don't want these wires coming out. All right, let's solder down. Now we've got to trim the excess wire. And finally, let's not forget E+. Plus.
And that's it. Now I can turn off my soldering iron because I already have a header soldered here. Now I am going to affix this HX711 board like so. One thing to note is that there are many options to make this more accessible uh, depending on your needs and how you're going to use this pasta platform later on. So here uh, I like that I have these connectors but the problem is that if I want to put if it's like so let me just flip it around if I glue it down like so the problem is if I want to use a, uh, Okay, put in a cage or something that uh, will hit these pins. So right now I don't have a problem with this, but if you do for some reason, you can always just instead of soldering this header, glue this here and glue some wires here and have these wires go out of the pasta platform and out in, uh, to the microcontroller unit that you're going to be using. This is actually what we did in our original pasta, so uh, you can see here, while a bit messy, uh, that uh, the HX711 board is here, and it has wires going out of the scale and into this microcontroller board. Okay, now I'll use some double-sided tape to glue the HX711 in place. That's it. Now, since these pins are taller than the scale itself, I'm just gonna use this so I don't break something off and I'm going to tidy up the wires. or at least I'll try to. So what's most important here is that um, you make sure that these wires don't interfere with your load cells. That is, that they don't come beneath the load cells skewing your measurements and putting the whole scale off center. So I'll just use a bit of scotch tape to affix it all into place. And that's it. Now, let's put it like so and it's not wobbly. Let's take a look underneath and everything seems fine. Aside from a bit of wires, the scale seems to only touch uh, the, the surface it's on with its four load cells, which is what we want. Okay. Okay, and we're almost done. All that's left is to connect this to a microcontroller, like an Arduino, that has a USB. So we can actually get 
uh, data from this scale onto a computer. What I have here is an ESP based board. It's not your everyday Arduino, but it behaves just like one. If you have a regular Arduino board, don't worry. Uh, the library, software library that we'll be using is compatible with all your uh, regular Arduino boards that uh, you might be more accustomed to than this one. Let's see what pins we need to use here. We need power, that's 3.3 volts, that's here, we're going to use the red wire for this, and the ground. Next, we can use almost whichever two pins we'd like. I think the library originally uses pins 2 and 3. Here I'm going to use pins 13 and 14 because I think the pins 2 and 3 are res reserved on this board for something. I'm not sure. It's not really that important because we can configure which pins we will be using in code later on. So I'm going to be using 13 and 14. Now the pins go VCC clock we can use whichever we'd like but we need to remember which it is so clock goes to 13 data goes to 14 and ground which is black and that's it now all that's left is to plug this little board into a computer, load up a sketch, and that's it from the hardware part. Congratulations, you're a certified pasta chef.